Hello everyone, I'm Rich Lamont. Welcome back to my fly tying channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. So I put this channel together to share my love of salmon flies and fly tying. Uh, there's a little bit of something for everybody here. Um, I do showcase a lot of, you know, uh, very artsy, very um, specific, um, hard to tie salmon flies. But I also do tie a lot of, uh, you know, Pacific Northwest patterns, spay flies, D flies, things like that. So if you've got any uh, flies that you'd like to see tied, uh, something that you'd like to learn a little bit more about, by all means, please reach out to me, leave a message, um, comment in my videos, um, just leave a request. I'm happy to get to them. Um, now, all that being said, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Let's get on with it. Hello everyone, welcome back to part two of the Delvine Salmon Fly. Um, as you can see, uh, we've got the bottom half finished and we're getting ready to start on the top half, the wing. Now the underwing on this, in the, in the book it shows what appears to be white tip turkey, um, but it, does, uh, it doesn't really show much for the white tip. There's, uh, it seems to be mostly dark, so I'm actually going to use um, just a dark model turkey for the underwing on this. So I've got some uh, paired up and snipped out already ready to get tied in. And one thing to remember when you're tying in your underwing is you want your main wing to be able to blend into your underwing. So what we'll do is just to make sure we'll tie this in first. We'll tie it in real quick, get a look at it, measure up the main wing, and see where the main wing is going to sit over the top of this before we finally set this in place. Now this might be the right spot, but it might not be, so let's see. Now after the other video, after video one, um, I went to go back and I took a look at the main wing. The golden pheasant tail that I had planned on using is not long enough for this hook. So I went ahead and I replaced that golden pheasant tail with amgold. Now amgold is a cross between amherst and golden pheasant. So you get the length of the amherst but the patterning of the golden pheasant. But as you can see, it's a little bit lighter than regular golden pheasant tail is. So now let's see. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the way that underwing is sitting. Let me snug that down just a bit more. And you can see it's being pushed up just a little bit. So take care of that by... That's being pushed up by the throat. And so what we're going to do is take this back off. And remove some of the throat here. These fibers up here on top. Mainly. <clears throat> I 
And what I'm doing there is just trying to get just enough over the hackle so it doesn't have that trapped hackle appearance. But at the same time, um, <laughs> you know, it's funny I mentioned it. Uh, I did get a little bit too close to the head, so I'm starting to see a little bit of the thread slide. So I'm just trying to get that thread just far enough back so we don't have that. And setting your underwing, uh, a turkey underwing, is a lot like setting a regular wing. You just don't have the golden pheasant tippet um, underneath it. Now setting the main wing over the uh, turkey underwing, and it can be can be a little bit more challenging. All right, I like that. <clears throat> so next, we'll tie in the main wing. And get these lined up real quick. Now, to avoid any issues, what I'm going to do, it seems like the main wing is going to be slightly difficult. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of head cement right here. Let that dry, then we'll clip this off, and then we'll get the rest of the wing on. That'll make things look just a bit easier. that set up for just a minute and then we'll get that main wing on there all right I think that's set up well enough so we'll go ahead and just remove most of it we don't have to take all of it off just enough to get it out of the way And we'll set the main wing up here. I'm not quite thrilled with the alignment of these. Hold on just a moment. Show you what I'm talking about. If you look at the tips here, not quite lined up right.
only real downside to Amgold is how steep this is, right where the tips are. Well, I am not happy with that either. Actually, I think this underwing does need to come forward just a smidge. And this does make it a little harder and the head may be a little bit thicker because there's enough head cement on there already that this is already set up and kind of hardened. That little bit should make a difference though. Nice long sleep wing. And that's what I was looking for. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit more saliva on this, and once again, we'll take a quick pause, and then we'll come back and finish the sides.
All right, so one of the next things is a couple of strands of Peacock Sword. So Peacock Sword is a little bit difficult to work with, so what I like to do is take the sword and use your thumbnail, and you can just curl it kind of like you would a ribbon, and then put a little kink in it right where your tie-in point is going to be. And you can take that and lay it over the top. And tie it in. It is kind of finicky. Let me get some of this uh, wing material out of the way. This wing material, this uh, head cement I put on there rather, not quite 100% dry yet. All right, now let's see if we've got better luck. There we go. All right, now the sides are pintail, but I'm going to use teal on this one. They look very, very similar. Um, pintail is just a little, a little bit darker. Now all I'm using is the tips of a teal feather. We'll pull away a little bit more. That looks about right. Same for the opposite side. Then a couple of jungle cock eyes. 
So strip away the fluff on the Dremel cock. Now the jungle cock should just about reach the mid butt right here. Um, either right about to it or just a hair past it, but you don't want to have the eye tucked all the way in and have everything stripped off. You want to have a little bit of this fluff here and have it give it a nice full look. Now the topping is a golden pheasant crest, which this one might actually be just a shade short. Yeah, that'll fit. I think this one's just going to fit. If you have issues tying in your topping, grab your flat nose pliers and just pinch down that tie-in point. That'll flatten it out for you. Make tying in a little bit better. Hmm. Well, I'm going to be honest, folks. I'm not happy with this tail. It's just a, a shade too long for the fly, for the wing. And I can manipulate it a little bit here and make them touch and whatever, make it probably looks somewhat halfway decent but I'm really not happy with it and going longer on the topping just doesn't agree with my agree with me either yeah the shape of this fly is not not what I was expecting and what I was hoping for So 
So I'm going to sit here and finagle with this a minute and see if I can make make it a little better, a little better. But um, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not overly pleased. And you see, I can make the the, the tail and the topping touch there, and I can make it look. And I just, uh, I don't like the shape of it. I'm, I'm... I think it's just too long. Well, I'm going to leave it anyway. I'm going to go with it, and um, let me know in the comments section. Let me know what you guys think. If, uh, you know, I'm just being my own worst enemy again, or if um, there's just something about it. Uh, don't be bashful. Uh, be honest. I really would like to know your opinions on it, and um, what you guys feel, because, um, you know, I, I do tie to a certain expectation of myself, and I know we're our own worst critics. Um, time after time, I've I've tied some some flies that I'm overly extremely happy with, and then I have some flies that I, I just am not. And uh, this one's kind of in the middle for me. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. And we're gonna finish this off with some red macaw or scarlet macaw horns now these are from the tail feathers of the scarlet macaw mainly the center tail is what's mostly used on these Something else just happened here. What's going on? All right, a little bit more saliva on the head. We're gonna let that dry real good. And then we'll come back and form the head on that. All right. See. 
All right, that should be good and dry now. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, remove all the excess and go ahead and build our head. Barely left myself enough room. You know, I even said it earlier in the video, in uh, video one, you want to leave enough room for the wing, the throat, and the head. And I've barely accomplished that. But I should still have enough room. Alright, so we've trimmed away all the excess material. And we're just going to use the cauterizer here. And just get rid of anything else that's just kind of sticking out. I can arrange the rest of the fly in a little bit. Make sure the other side is good. Not exactly. Now being this is not a fishing fly, uh, I'm going to finish it in my kind of usual fashion. Um, more with wax on the head than anything. Could I throw this in the water? It probably. Would it hold together? More than likely for a little while. Um, I do have enough saliva and head cement in there uh, that should hold everything together. But... Again, like I said, I, I, I think this one's going to go for a frame. Or maybe just into a box for now. And perhaps it'll be a giveaway, who knows. I haven't quite decided the fate on this one yet. I'll have to look at it some more and determine whether or not I want this one to live on. I might recycle the hook and, and some of the materials, I'm not sure. I'll have to look at it and see if it grows on me. I am missing an integral part of this, and that is the head. Or excuse me, the lighter to heat up. Okay. So for this, for those of you that have not seen me do this before, um, I keep my wax in a ball and what I'll do is I'll heat up just a small spot on there and with my bodkin I'll pick up some of that wax on the tip. It'll probably harden a little bit on the tip of that bodkin so just hit it with a lighter really quick and very carefully apply it to the front of the hook. And you want to be very gentle doing this and very gradually add the wax to this. Get a little too far ahead of yourself and you can wind up getting it all over the 
gut eye and the feathers and that can make for a disappointing end all right so that being on there we can now clip away that thread and bobbin and now we'll use the needle a little bit more to spread the wax around a bit. Let's go ahead and clear the wax, whatever the wax is left on the edge of the end of the needle. Go ahead and clear that away. I'll just scrape it with a razor blade. Then take your lighter and carefully heat up the end of your bodkin. And you've got it nice and warm. And go ahead and touch that to the wax and start spreading that wax out even more. Some of this wax will soak in uh, if it's hot enough. But if you've got enough saliar on there, It'll keep some of that wax from getting in there. <clears throat> okay, so now the head is formed. Now we can... I use a different bodkin for my salire. Now we can go ahead and add the salire to it. And this is the same process, very carefully adding a layer of black saliar to the exterior. And you want to do this with as little on the bodkin as you can get. You don't want to be using huge amounts. You don't want to have it dripping off of the bodkin. Alright, and that's coat number one, but that's what it'll look like when it's finished. I'll probably do another two coats or so of that on there, and uh, that'll complete the head on this. So, uh, that'll pretty much do it for this video. I'll take another minute here. Let's back this camera up. Quick little feather revision here and uh, neaten things up just a little bit.
Okay. This would be the finished version of the Delvine uh, from Hardy Salmon Flies. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you're not subscribed, please think about subscribing. Uh, that helps out the channel and, uh, you know, helps me out, lets me know I'm doing things that you guys like. And, of course, you know, if I'm always open for requests. So if there's a fly you'd like to see, um, a different style of fly you'd like to see, uh, shoot me a message, leave something in the comment section below, and I'd be more than happy to get to it. Um, you can reach me on Instagram as well at Rich Lamont Flies. I'm sorry, Rich underscore Lamont underscore Flies. And I am also on Facebook. So, um... You know, all that being said, I hope you guys have a wonderful night, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.